staff is bringing it over now. Can you hear me? Okay, thanks. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining us for this joint committee on with the Energy, Economic Development, and Tourism Committee and our good friends from the Committee on Government Operations. We're on a 305 uh, agenda. And before we get to the measure in front of us, I need to make a quick uh, housekeeping announcement. This meeting, including the audio and video of re re uh, remote participants, is being streamed live on YouTube. You'll find links to viewing options on all of the Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. In the unlikely event that we hit some technical turbulence and this hearing takes a nosedive, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 3 o'clock on Monday, February, uh, what is February? Okay, what's February? Monday's date? Why am I saying February? Because I have March, March 22nd. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stuck in the last month. Um, and for those participating remotely, all testifier audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it is your turn to testify. So members, we're on House Bill 550 HD2 relating to energy efficiency. First in our testifiers, this is Kurt Otoguro from DAGS. Hi, this is Deej Momoa with DAGS, um, testifying for Comptroller. The department stands on its written testimony and comments. Okay, thank you, Dean. And Young O from the Chamber of Commerce has submitted testimony in support. Brian Kealoha from Hawaii Energy, also in support. Kika Bukowski from the Plumbers and Plumbers Union. I don't know if Kika is there, but he has submitted testimony in support. We have Michael Munikata from Ulupono has submitted testimony in support. Jeff Mikuluna from Blue Planet, also in support. And Ted Bolin from Climate Protectors Hawaii. Hi, Ted. Okay. Thank you, Chair. And, and uh, Vice Chairs and members of the committee, on behalf of the Climate Protectors Hawaii, I just want to express what a good idea this bill is. It'll save taxpayers money, it'll create green jobs, and from our point of view, it will also do a lot to help with the climate crisis, which is a huge emergency for the state that we need to get on now. And this is one way that we can save uh, lots of emissions and, and produce a better result for the climate. So thank you for the opportunity to testify. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you for joining us, Ted. We have uh, Sherry Pollock, Janet Pappas, and Kaike Baltimore, Baltimore uh, all in support. Uh, members, any questions of those who are with us via video conference? No? Okay, we're going to take a really quick break uh, before taking the vote. Uh, thank you everyone for your patience. We're reconvening the joint hearing for our 305 agenda. We're contemplating HB 550 HD2 relating to energy efficiency. The two chairs that our members have conferred, we want to make three, actually four uh, amendments. Uh, first amendment is where it's stated that there's an exception for Aloha Stadium, we're going to say it's Aloha Stadium District to make it clear that it's not just the stadium itself but the 98 acres that the stadium sits on. Second amendment is to say that uh, instead of having the Hawaii State Energy Office do the usage study, we're going to have HNEI do the study because as we heard in some other previous bills, HNEI has the, the bandwidth, the intellect, and the money, importantly, to do this. We don't want to burden the, the Energy Office with something that is going to cost them money. Uh, the third amendment is going to be to uh, just make sure that we're not going to have these studies done on buildings that are soon to be former buildings. So we're going to allow DAGs to opt out of this requirement if they see that a building is soon to be demolished, soon being within the next five years. The fourth amendment we're going to make is on page 6, line 16. It says here, um, talks about state facilities. We're going to make it state owned. We're going to insert owned facilities to make it clear that uh, we don't want this to be 
uh, leased properties, just the stuff that the state actually has full title to. So those are the four suggested amendments. Members, any questions? If not, uh, Senator Misalucha, uh, going to pass this measure with amendments and the chair votes aye. For Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism, as regards to House Bill 550HD2, Chair recommends pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Lee? Aye. Senator Riviere? Aye. Senator Favela is excused. You have four votes. Your recommendations adopted, Chair. Thank you. Same recommendations for uh, Governing Operations Committee. Uh, Chair votes aye. Senator Dela, please. Okay. House Bill 550 HD2 recommendations. Senator Chang. Excuse. Is he on? No. No, he's not here. Okay. Um, Senator Gavin. Aye. Senator Favela. Not here. Okay. With three members present, recommendation adopted. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you, members. We're going to adjourn. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Hello again. We have switched out to our new friends. Uh, this is the Committee on Economic Development and Tourism, oh, and Energy, can't forget that. Uh, and our good friends from the Committee on Transportation for a 315 agenda, we have three items on this measure. The first is House Bill 552HD1 relating to the environment. And first on our testifiers list, we have Scott Glenn from the State Energy Office. Aloha, uh, Chair Mukai, uh, Chair Lee, Vice Chair Misaluchan, Vice Chair Inouye, and members of the committee. The uh, Energy Office submitted testimony in support and would note for HB 552 that the state fleet is about 5,000 vehicles all told. But uh, we're uh, focusing here on light duty passenger cars, which are about 1,000 vehicles, most of which are ready for EV or uh, zero emission vehicle type conversion which could include uh, EV or hydrogen or other types of uh, renewably sourced technologies. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Next we have Bonnie uh, Kahakui. Good afternoon, from the Chair, procurement Chair, office. members of both committees. Bonnie Kahakui for the State Procurement Office. We stand on our written testimony, providing comments and recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. We have uh, June Chi from Hawaiian Electric. Is June there? Hey, yeah. Senator, they're not present. Okay, it's not her month. Okay, uh, moving on from June to Tiffany Yajima, Alliance for Automobile Innovators. Good afternoon, Chair Bukai, Chair Lee, and members of the Joint Committees. Uh, we stand on behalf of the Alliance for Automotive Innovation. We stand in our testimony in support of the HD1 of this measure. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Noel Boyle from the Hawaii EV Association has provided testimony support. Sonia Kass from Kauai EV, also in support. Robert King from Pacific Biodiesel Technologies has submitted testimony support. Kimo Haynes from Hawaii Petroleum Marketers Association is, has provided commentary. Richard Ha from Sustainable Energy Hawaii in support. Micah Munakata from Ulupono Initiative. Good afternoon, Chair Wakai, Chair Lee, and members of the committees. Micah Munakata here on behalf of the Ulupono Initiative. We stand on our written testimony in support of this measure with one quick comment, Chair. Um, uh, just asking the committees to consider uh, amending the goal um, date that's currently attached to 552. I know that this particular committee uh, did pass Senate Bill 920 with similar goal-oriented uh, approach looking to address it by 2030. So we asked the committee to consider amending it, especially in light of 
the state energy office's numbers that were just referenced. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Jeff Nicoluna from Blue Planet. Thank you, Chair Kai, uh, Chair Lee, members of the committees. Uh, Blue Planet Foundation will stand on its written testimony in support of House Bill 552, and we uh, agree with Little Pono's amendment of having a 2030 uh, deadline for this um, zero emission fleet. Uh, Mahalo for the opportunity to testify. Thank you for joining us, Chef. Jody Molinis Molinowski from the Sierra Club has submitted testimony support. We also have uh, Charles Ice from the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party in support. And we have Ted Bolin from Climate Protectors of Hawaii. Hi, Ted. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I agree with Ola Pono's am uh, amendment as well, uh, moving the date up to 2030. Uh, electric vehicles are a great way to move toward a solution on climate change. And I actually would like to see the bill amended to include a deadline for all cars, not just for state cars because this is one area where the market is moving really fast. And if we watch what's going on with, with the auto companies and with other states, California's adopted a 2035 date for the whole state. And that's what I'd like to see Hawaii do as well to try to lead on climate change. So thank you for the opportunity to testimony, testify, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you, Ted. And members, we have about uh, 10 more pieces of testimony from individuals all in support. Uh, members, any questions of those who joined us online? No? Uh, I have a question for Scott Glenn. Hello, Hi, Scott. Um, in your testimony, you have made two suggested amendments. And to be honest, I don't fully understand the amendments and why they're necessary. Could you explain? Uh, the first one is on page two of your testimony with regard to um, section 196-9, and you want to make uh, a change. Is that my understanding? Uh, yes, Chair. So 196-9 currently uh, has a list of guidelines for preferential purchasing policy of vehicles. And so the recommendation would be to update that language to reflect whatever's changed by this bill. So it would be putting, um, it would be, it's basically outdated now. Um, and so this would be making that language reflect the overall change to make it consistent with the other parts of the bill. Okay, that sounds reasonable. And then you also have another suggested amendment with regard to um, section six, is it 190? Oh, I'm sorry, that, mm -hmm. that part of page three is also addressed the same issue, is that correct? Uh, the uh, reference on section 26-6, um, the idea would be that um, one, of the, one of the things with targets, right, is um, we still want to make sure that we uh, create a mechanism for action, for things to be done to make sure we're moving forward on those targets. And what we suggested here would be uh, something along the lines of the comptroller, uh, which already reviews most vehicle purchases, Basically, a department would have to, by default, uh, get a zero emission vehicle. And if they needed an exemption for whatever unique particular reason, um, they would have to get a waiver from the comptroller. And that would create an enforcement mechanism so that over time, as we replace vehicles, the incentive structure for agencies is to start with an EV and put all the work on an agency if they don't want an EV to somehow justify not getting one. Um, so that's uh, one way of, that we were thinking could be to approach uh, making a transition for the fleet through purchasing policy. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Scott. Members, any further questions? Oh. Uh, is someone from uh, Bonnie? Are you still there from procurement? Yes, I am. Okay, Bonnie. I'm looking at your testimony, and you want to delete a lot of uh, sections of, of this particular bill. But the deletions, wouldn't that just kind of to almost undermine the intent of, of, of the measure? Can you explain to me about why you want to remove section two, page two, line 16 through 20, as well as page three, lines one through 12? So basically, they're doing just streamlining the code itself. 
We already have a code, uh, Cemetery Day Fed Club, that has similar language for light duty vehicles. And when that language is repeated, when you put in the language about other motor vehicle requirements. So we're just saying, instead of having a section for light duty, and then one for medium duty, and one for heavy duty, just lump them all together and call it light, medium, and heavy duty motor vehicle requirements. That was the intent. Oh, okay, okay, just to make it more efficient and succinct. Yes. Okay, I thought we somehow wanted to take all of those three areas out of uh, this bill. Okay, um, th thank you, Bonnie. Members, any further questions? If not, I'm going to hand it over to my partner here to take over the next two bills. Okay, thank you, Chair. Sure. Uh, up next is House Bill 683 HD2 relating to sustainable aviation fuel, which establishes the Sustainable Aviation Fuel Program to provide matching grants for small businesses in Hawaii developing products related to sustainable aviation fuel. And testifying first on 683 is the, um, oh, it's Daniel Bass from the Office of Planning. Aloha, Senators. Happy Aloha Friday. Um, my name is Daniel Basti, Sustainability Coordinator, representing the Office of Finance Testimony here today. We're going to stand on our testimony, offering comments, and we just wanted to highlight that there is a market under that is under development thanks to the many international initiatives going on, um, positively influencing these, mar influencing these markets, inclusive of Boeing's commitment to transition its entire commercial aircraft fleet to fly 100% on sustainable aviation fuels. We look forward to supporting HTDC in, su in these sustainable and climate adaptive measures. Thank you so much. Aloha. Thank you very much. Up next, uh, Hawaii State Energy Office. Aloha. The Energy Office stands on its testimony and support. Thank you. Thank you. Hawaii Bioeconomy Trade Organization uh, submitted testimony and support. HT, well, I apologize, HTDC. Thank you, Chairs, uh, Vice Chairs, members of the committee, Lenny Gashi for HTDC. We stand on our written comments available for questions. Thank you. We also have um, testimony and support from Airlines for America, Climate Protectors Hawaii, Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party, and nine individuals. And that's all the testimony we have on this. Are there any questions? If not, all right, thank you. Let's move on to the next measure, House Bill 1142 HD2 relating to energy, which establishes a surcharge on the sale of high-end gasoline vehicles to fund electric vehicle charging system installation. And testifying first on 1142 is the Department of Taxation. Good afternoon, Chair Jacob Hurlitz on behalf of the Department of Taxation. We'll stand on our written testimony offering comments requesting a January 1 effective date. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is the Department of Budget and Finance uh, with comments. Hawaii Public Utilities Commission. Good afternoon, Chair. Uh, members of the committees, uh, we stand on our written testimony offering comments. Thank you, available for any questions. Thank you. Hawaii State Energy Office. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committees. We stand on our written uh, testimony offering comments. Thank you. Thank you. We also have supportive testimony from the City and County of Honolulu Office of Climate Change, Sustainability and Resiliency, as well as the Hawaii EV Association. Uh, up next is Tesla. Um, good afternoon, Chair Lee, Chair Wakai, and Vice Chairs. Um, this is Sandy Wong on behalf of Tesla. Uh, we are in support on this measure. Uh, we have some written, written testimony, so we will stand on it, and I am available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is the Tax Foundation. Bear with us. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chair, Senators. Uh, Tom Yamachika from Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Uh, we have submitted written testimony. We'll stand on that and be available for questions. Thank you. Uh, up next is the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, in, oh, sorry, in opposition. Um, Soda Home Bus and Mobility. If you're with us, in support. Hawaii Auto Dealers Association. Mr. Rolf, good afternoon. 
Good afternoon, chairs and vice chairs and members of the committee. I'm David Ralph with the Hawaii Automobile Dealers Association. Um, the dealers oppose this bill because it, it deals uneven handedly with the imposition of a tax on a small subset of customers uh, for a public purpose that demonstrates only an incidental benefit for a few. But I think more importantly, uh, it, it would hurt businesses and and cost employees that are not jobs in this fragile economy. And, and that's why we've offered our opposition. But I need to add that this tax is an instrument that doesn't take into account many things. The complexities in the language of leases are not taken into account. Residual value is a, a much more important part of a lease than MSRP. Uh, the complexities of trade-ins, where you have the, the tax on gross proceeds, that's a very complex issue, and it doesn't take into account all that. The complexities of manufacturing suggest retail price. In fact, it's dating backwards and dating forwards all at the same time, and the word published makes it do that, and, and that makes it very complex. Then you have the complexities of establish, establishing a nexus between the number 60,000 attached to MSRP and a dollar sign and the number of EV charging stations or how you would fund EV charging stations. The arbitrary number 60,000 MSRP doesn't connect to how many charging stations. Uh, the, then there's the complexity of establishing how many charging stations and what kind of charging stations and what kind of plugs and adapters they have and then where they're all going to be placed. Those are complex, is complex issues time after time after time uh, that, that come up in, in, in under the framework of this bill. The changes right now in the industry are, are rapid and complex. And, and this, is, this bill applies to a 10-year period. Uh, and, it, and all the aspects of the bill would have to be changed frequently to encompass those, that decade-long period. Evolution occurs more quickly uh, when there's an unforeseen market disruption like we've had. And all of us yesterday at the board meeting called this the COVID effect. And that's why I thank you for the chance to, to share this with you because they, they really looked at the rapid changes. And just today it came out that in General Motors, CEO Mary Barra has talked about the ventilator speed, which which they, in two days, sent people off to the ventilator factory in D.C to get 3D scans of those ventilator parts so GM could step up and make 300,000 ventilators. That's what the COVID effect is about. The manufacturer is changing things very rapidly. But, but a complex tax in the middle of all this, uh, with, on a, from a small state, we believe it just wouldn't move things forward. And that's why dealers have proposed that all the stakeholders come to the table, lay down their cards, and work together. In a small state, we can do that. We need to put a roadmap together for easy, easy adoption, and then have the auto manufacturers that take the lead on that. They're really moving quickly, and if we could do that, we would actually show the rest of the country how a group of people can work together. So that's why we've opposed this bill. It's so complex. We've asked to get together at the table and move them forward, and we appreciate the leadership of the, of the manufacturers right now uh, in making this key transition. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to testify to why we oppose you. Uh, I appreciate very much as uh, you allowing us to do that. Thank you very much. Uh, up next, we have uh, Cutter Management Company in opposition. Ulupono Initiative. Good afternoon, Chair Lee, Chair Okai, members of the committees. Michael Munikata here on behalf of the Ulupono Initiative. We stand on our testimony in support of this measure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Grassroots Institute of Hawaii with comments. The Alliance for Automotive Innovators. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Lee and Chair Wakai. My name is Kurt Augustine, and I'm the Senior Director of Government Affairs for the Alliance for Automotive Innovation. Uh, we stand on our testimony, but would like to add a couple comments uh, to uh, our comments. Uh, clearly, automakers uh, that I represent, and I represent all of the automakers who produce 99% of the vehicles sold in the United States, clearly support zero emission vehicles and the charging infrastructure that's necessary. So that's that's really not what the uh, our concern about this bill is. Our concern is that this bill and its tax penalizes working people and families who have uh, a large or have special needs 
because they don't have alternatives to that. Currently, there are no uh, electric pickups for sale in the United States, and there's only one large uh, SUV that would uh, fit under this category. So this is a tax on people who have no choice in what they need for their families and their businesses and getting to and from work. In some of uh, the points about this bill, you will hear that this is about with you know exotic automakers and vehicles should be able to pay for these type of things. They cost more. But if I may, let me share you with some of the exotic name so-called exotic nameplates of vehicles that would be taxed uh, when consumers purchase this: Chevrolet, Dodge, Ford, Nissan, Kia, Toyota, Jeep. Not exactly the specialty vehicles that one often hears that would be taxed by this. These are vehicles that are purchased by everyday people, again, trying to get to work or supporting their families. And we strongly oppose a tax on these families to raise the cost of their vehicles. And we ask for a, your opposition to this bill, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, we have comments, or excuse me, uh, Hawaii Energy with comments. The American Lung Association of Hawaii. Aloha, Chairs. I'm Pedro Haro, uh, Executive Director of the American Lung Association in Hawaii. Uh, we stand in full support of House Bill 1142. Uh, research by the American Lung Association has shown that transitioning to zero emission vehicle transportation, along with increasing levels of renewable energy, will save lives by decreasing asthma triggers, improving the quality of air along roadways and maybe many other positive effects. We will also see a decrease of state costs associated with the care of these conditions. Our full testimony has been submitted in writing, and we thank you for taking up this important bill. Thank you. Uh, Hawaiian Electric. He goes with us uh, in support. Um, local 368. Uh, in opposition, Climate hello. Oh, oh, I'm hello. sorry. Yeah, this is uh, sorry about that. Ryan Kobayashi uh, from the Hawaii Laborers Union. Uh, we stand in strong opposition um, to this uh, to HB 1142 HD2. Um, we've submitted written testimony in opposition, um, but I would also like to uh, kind of you know elaborate why exactly why um, we are in opposition. Currently, there are no electric vehicle pickup trucks on the market, um, you know, and that is what our industry depends on, you know. And even if there were, these are, you know, they would have. Well, let me take a step back. Well, how the pickup trucks are generally handled in our industry is that the workers take them home, so charging becomes a problem. Do these uh, residences have the ability to charge? Secondly, if they don't, does the company pay for the charging station at the employee's home who's taking this truck home? If you look at many, a lot of the companies, and I don't know how familiar um, everyone is with um, construction companies and where they're located. They're located in Mapuna Puna, Kalihi, uh, Arden Campbell Industrial Park. They don't have big parking lots. You know, um, so they can't really drive those trucks to the back to the office at the end of the workday to be recharged. They can't charge them on the job site because during the day, those trucks need to be working. They can't leave them there at night because construction sites are notoriously not unsecure. So that would mean then that they would have to hire special duty police officers overnight. All of this would contribute to driving the cost of housing up if this, if something like this were imposed on the uh, construction industry. Secondly, um, our a lot of our members, you know, they're they have large families, and as previous testifiers said, you know, um, right now there are they need a way to transport their families. The only really car that's on the market out there right now that's in the price range of our members is the Nissan Leaf. 
but you know you can imagine trying to stuff five people into a Nissan Leaf construction worker family generally bigger bigger type of people it, this this amounts to penalizing you know the working class person to subsidize infrastructure for people who can afford these um, electric vehicles right now and right now if you take a look all you have to do is watch tv over the course of this weekend the only people producing um, electric vehicles are people like tesla bmw porsche soon to come mercedes audi our members can't afford to purchase these vehicles for their family so you know we would you know but um as far as that goes that's the end of my testimony that uh, we would suggest that this committee defer the discussion thank, thank you. you thank you thank you um, up next we have climate protectors hawaii in support blue planet foundation uh it thank you uh chairs lee and chairs mckay um, blue planet foundation strongly supports house bill 1142 uh, this measure provides an innovative and revenue neutral funding pathway for ensuring that Hawaii's successful EV charging station rebate program continues. Um, and let's be clear, this program is really geared toward providing charging infrastructure in multifamily buildings at workplaces where it's needed most. Um, we're, we're rushing headlong into this new future uh, powered by electrified transportation and we're ill prepared for it. Um, this measure will help us make sure we go by design and not just let things uh, unfold by default and making sure the infrastructure is there to support these zero emission vehicles. Um, just to be really clear, this measure targets largely luxury gas powered vehicles. Um, luxury vehicles over $60,000. We're not talking about the common everyday vehicle. If you look at the most common vehicle in Hawaii, it's the uh, Toyota Tacoma. Um, right now, Servco Toyota has 112 new Toyota Tacomas on sale, and not one of them is over $45,000. So we're really talking about high-end vehicles, vehicles typically when people purchase a, a Mercedes or a Jaguar, an additional 1% is not going to dissuade them. But more importantly, it's not this everyday vehicle that we're thinking about. Whereas in the electric vehicle side, more and more are getting uh, much more affordable, I drive a Volkswagen uh, all electric. Uh, there are many more coming to market. Uh, but we have to be prepared and prepared in the right places, workplaces and multifamily um, housing. And that's why the existing rebate program uh, is so important to ensure this rollout continues smoothly. Um, so with that, uh, we, we hope we can move this forward. This is really a, a creative way to do it without touching the general fund, but making sure that we have a pathway for um, clean electric vehicles going forward. Thanks for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Up next, we have testimony from the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii in support. Uh, Kauai EV in support. And we have additional testimony from one individual in opposition and 19 individuals in support. And that's all the testimony we have in this measure. And with that, are there any questions? Uh, if not, real quick, um, for the Alliance for Automotive Innovation, if you're still with us. Oh, maybe not with us. Sir. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Um, thanks for your testimony. Uh, you know, one of the things that this whole bill about, obviously, is preparing for the future and making sure that our residents here in Hawaii, regardless of their economic station or where they live or what they choose to drive, are prepared for the eventual switch to electric vehicles. Um, and seeing as a good number of uh, big manufacturers, well, all auto manufacturers are, are moving that direction and making investments in that direction, um, clearly charging infrastructure is going to be an issue. Uh, at what point? For your members, I guess, is there um, additional engagement with the states to really roll out that charging infrastructure on your end? Or is this well, mostly being led on the state level around the country? Uh, uh, yes, well, you're absolutely right that charging infrastructure is a critical element to the success 
of the zero emission vehicle market? Is there somewhat of a chicken and egg uh, scenario there? Obviously, people won't buy vehicles if they can't charge them, and charging won't be in place if, if uh, there aren't vehicles to uh, charge and to make money from them. Uh, our companies uh, have been working with states all over the uh, United States uh, on working on programs. We have been directly involved, uh, especially in California, since uh, back in the uh, early part of the 20, uh, 2004 era, supporting legislation that pays for both electric vehicle infrastructure as well as hydrogen infrastructure. Uh, our, our companies are making the vehicles. Uh, we generate these, it's well documented that we are uh, essentially losing money on every vehicle that is sold. And our, you know, so we are, that is our commitment to the electric vehicle market to put this, put these out there. We have some very long range plans. Some of them have been mentioned uh, in the hearing here. Our companies are committed uh, to electric vehicles. So we are committed to having an electric vehicle charging network out there. We just don't believe this is the solution to put a tax on people who, who will not benefit uh, through their uh, tax purchases uh, on these uh, charging stations. And we think it's somewhat ironic that some supporters uh, of the bills whose vehicles would not be taxed would be the main beneficiaries of this. And that's perplexing to us. And that's why we oppose the bill, but certainly not any rollout of a, a charging network in the state of Hawaii. Thanks. And as far as time frame goes, uh, obviously different manufacturers are moving forward at different speeds, but generally everybody's getting faster as they move toward full electrification. GM you know, famously announced that they're no longer going to sell gas cars by 2035 and Jaguar by 2025 and, and so forth. Um, is there, for the rest of the manufacturers in your cohort, is there a, a realistic or reasonable time frame that everybody's sort of pegged on for when they're going to finish that conversion? Well, not, uh, uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, not all the companies have announced their plans. There are, you know, there, uh, some have committed short term. Uh, Ford has announced many vehicles, uh, Volvo as well. Uh, and not all the 23 major manufacturers have done so. Um, but even with General Motors announcement, um, that there are caveats to that announcement. And one of them is uh, about charging infrastructure. Uh, they are committed to making those vehicles, but they also recognize between now and for, in the next 14 years that our certain benchmarks aren't hit, that it's not going to be a reality for uh, the driving public to be totally electric. So. They're prepared to make them, but they also condition that with what whatever is happening in, in each individual state and market as to the viability of uh, of being able to fuel, whether it's hydrogen, electric, or perhaps some new technology that comes up in the next decade. Sure, and I, I guess the last thing I'd, I'd just ask to that point, um, if we're going in that direction, don't the shareholder reports from any of these companies also acknowledge that they have to catch up to the leaders in this market if they're going to survive in the long term. And the SEC filings acknowledge that if they don't, there's a huge risk to their business model if they can't catch the Teslas and the Nissans and everybody else that are already leading in that category. Well, well isn't our time uh, shorter than we probably imagine? Uh, well, I, I'm not so sure about that. I, I, again, I can only go by what the public announcements are of our companies and can't speculate on what's uh, being considered in, uh, in, in private boardrooms. But our com companies, uh, and again, I, I represent every single manufacturer who sells a vehicle in the United States with the exception of one. Uh, they, they're all committed uh, to making electric vehicles. It's the future. There's no denying it. I, uh, as you probably remember I started off my remarks with that very statement that this is not about zero vehicle uh, versus gasoline powered engines vehicles. These electric vehicles are coming. They need to be, they need to have the infrastructure, but specifically on the, with this bill, we don't believe this is the solution uh, to that future that we're, we're all collectively and headed to it. and hoping so. The electric vehicles are terrific vehicles. They're very efficient. They're fun to drive. Again, our companies are making it. They know the world 
is an, coming to an electric and hydrogen future, and they're the uh, companies that are producing those vehicles. Understood. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Senator Ms. Lucho. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, Scott Glenn, please. Hi, Scott. You know, I'm new to this, so help educate me a little bit on this. So I think uh, Chair Lee talked about how we're really setting up um, you know, a good future, right? Laying down the foundation for a good future, and one of which is ensuring the infrastructure is, is there. So we're talking about the, the charging stations. How do we normally fund those? And I guess where I'm coming from is, I think one of the suggestions that was raised by Uluporno is setting aside part of the proposed tax to allocating it towards the lower income areas, as well as the rural areas. Um, other than taxes, uh, or, well, my question is, do you agree with that? And other than tha taxes, are there other financial ways to fund these charging stations as well as the necessary infrastructure? Uh, Loha, Senator, thank you for the question. I have not reviewed Ulupono's proposal in detail. So uh, can I you speak a little louder, Scott? Because we're having a hard time. Sure. Um, I, I haven't reviewed Ulupono's uh, proposal in detail, so I'm not up on that to be able to speak to that. But in terms of financing, uh, charging infrastructure it happens in a number of different ways. Um, on the state side, uh, usually it will happen through an agency's uh, CIP or operations budget. Um, we do have a new uh, vehicle through Department of Transportation. They have this contract for obtaining EVs and the charging station is wrapped into that cost. So that will be a way that we can move forward with replacing and getting charging stations at the state level. Um, also, individual property owners will install them themselves, uh, usually through their own profits or their own revenues to pay for it. And then also HECO is looking at some proposals um, Right now, I think they're considering a make-ready approach where they would install uh, infrastructure up to a certain point, and then the property owner would pay for putting the charging station itself in place. Um, so there's a variety of ways to, um, to get to having charging stations installed. And there's a variety of levels of cost from just a straight, you know, normal outlet that you would have in your garage that you could just plug your car into and charge overnight to level two and level three chargers. And that price ranges from $5,000 to $25,000 per charger. Um, roughly, I'm, very, I'm grossly averaging here. Um, so in terms of financing it, um, we have things that we have uh, uh, both, there's, there's the private market providing loans, there's, um, there's private businesses putting their own dollars into it. And then we do have um, currently through the, uh, the legislature mandated the energy office to uh, provide dollars from the energy security special fund to the public utilities commission, particularly Hawaii energy, uh, to provide for a program for EV charging installation as well, uh, which is going very well, it has very high demand. And I believe that's under consideration currently in the legislature for continuing to fund uh, through different mechanisms too. So uh, I, I guess the short answer is there is a suite of ways to install, to pay for charging stations and the types of charging stations that get in, get installed. I'm not in favor of this, but I'm just curious whether how is this is not the end all. Having a surcharge is not going to be the end all be all, though, right? Uh, I, it's I one of yeah, like you said, a suite of solutions. Okay, thank you, thank you, Chair. Sure. Further questions? Anybody? If not, uh, that's the. Thank you very much. That's the last bill on our agenda, so why don't we recess for decision making. Uh, can we go into the uh, little room for discussion with the committee? Thank you for your patience, everyone. We're reconvening our joint committee with the Committee on Energy, Economic Development, and Tourism, and our friends from the Committee on Transportation, the 315 agenda. On House Bill 552 HD1, relating to the environment, we're going to make a number of amendments to this measure. Uh, there are two parts of this bill that were put into the Senate Bill 920. 
So those two parts that we're taking out, we're going to delete from this bill since it already lives in, in the other bill. Those two parts are uh, part one of 552, uh, section four. This is clean energy transportation goals. We can take that part off, as well as uh, deleting part two of this bill, which talks about construction projects and roadway materials and uh, trying to utilize uh, carbon sequestration type materials for uh, building materials if feasible and cost effective. So those two parts we're gonna take out of this particular measure. Uh, we agree with Uni Porno and others who believe that we can get there before 2035. So we're gonna make the, the goal for complete transition for light duty fleet vehicles for the state to 2030. And we're also gonna say that by 2025, uh, we have to be at 40 percent just to make sure that they're moving uh, on, on this on this mandate. We're going to take the Hawaii State Energy Office's suggested amendment and also include Pacific Biodiesel. Um, bill right now doesn't even contemplate biodiesel as a as a form of clean transportation for the state. So we're going to allow them to be part of the discussion and make uh, biodiesel uh, number five on the priority list. And we're gonna make this really cool amendment to uh, try to grow more trees along our roadside. So we're gonna add uh, state and county agencies can also include trees and plants with lifespan longer than 20 years as part of CIP to meet goals of reducing carbon footprint and meeting state goals. Oh yeah, so I, I uh, mentioned that we're gonna try to get to that 100% renewable fleet by 2030. So, so 100% by 2030, 40% by 2025. So those are the, all the amendments for this measure. Members of either committee, or any discussion? If not, Senator Ms. Lucia, I vote yes. Okay, Chair, Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism. As regards to House Bill 552, HD1, Chair recommends pass with amendments. Uh, chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Lee? Aye. Senator Rivier? Aye. You have four ayes and one excuse for Senator Favela. Your recommendations adopted, Chair. Thank you. For the Committee on Transportation, same recommendation. Okay. For the Committee on Transportation, Chair's recommendation then is to pass HB 552, House Draft 1, with amendments. Chair Lee? Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator English is excused. Sh Senator Shimabukuro? Aye. Senator Favela? It's excused. The measure uh, is adopted with three ayes and two excused, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. All right, moving on to uh, the next couple measures. HB 683, HB2 related to sustainable aviation fuel, which establishes the sustainable aviation fuel program to provide grants to small businesses. Um, we'd like to move this on to the Ways and Means Committee, just noting it has a defective date. We'll move it on as is. Any discussion? If not, Mr. Yep. Chair. Okay, the Committee on Transportation on HB 683, House Draft 2, is to pass unamended. Uh, Chair Lee. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator English is excused. Senator Shimabukuro. Aye. And Senator Favela is excused. Measure is adopted with three ayes and two excused, Mr. Chair. Thank you. For EET, same recommendation. Any discussion? If not, Senator Mr. Mucha, I vote yes. For House Bill 683 HD2, Chair vote or recommends uh, pass unamended. For all members present, uh, any nays or res reservations? Chair, your recommendations adopted. Thank you. Moving on to the final bill on our agenda, HB 1142 HD2, related to energy, which establishes a surcharge on the sale of high end gasoline powered vehicles to fund EV infrastructure. I think we appreciate the. Uh, testimony from everybody, and I think the intent here is uh, inevitable. We have to deal with this issue. Um, but for the moment, we'd like to make uh, a few changes to the bill. So chairs having conferred, we'd like to recommend that we move the bill forward, however, removing the vehicle surcharge to pay for EV infrastructure and instead replacing it with a reallocation of funding from the barrel tax. So we'll um, move three cents into the uh, EV charging infrastructure uh, program uh, taking two cents from uh, what goes to each NEI and one cent out of the Energy Security Special Fund. Everybody catch that? 
Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So any discussion on this? Mm -hmm. If not, okay. Vice Chair. Uh, for the Committee on Transportation, Chair's recommendation is to pass HB 1142 House Draft 2 with amendments. And Chair Lee? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair goes aye. Senator English is excused. Senator Shimabukuro? Aye. Okay, Senator Favela is excused. Mr. Chair, you have three ayes and two excused. Thank you. It's adopted. Oh, sorry. EET, same recommendation. Any discussion? If not, Senator so Misuru, I vote yes. For Committee on Energy, Economic okay. Development, and Tourism, for HB 1142, HD 2, Chair recommends pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Lee? Aye. Senator Riviere? Aye. Senator Favela's excused. You have four ayes. Your recommendations adopted, Chair. Thank you very much. It's the end of our hearing, so I appreciate working with the good folks over at EET. Mm -hmm. Thanks Yay. for everything, and uh, happy Aloha Friday, everybody. Yep. We're adjourned. All right. Thank you. Okay, members, um, thank sorry, you for Sorry, your sorry, sorry, we are not live right now. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, sorry. I was practicing. <laughs> sorry, Senator, you can continue now. Okay. Hi, everyone. We are back by ourselves for the Energy, Economic Development, and Tourism Committee. We are now on our 330 agenda, room 224. We have three items on this agenda. First is House Bill 111 HD2 relating to renewable energy. Uh, I must have to say that uh, we have just a few minutes and my intention is to defer this measure. So if that's gonna affect your testimony, I'll keep that in mind as we go through the testifiers list. Uh, first on our testifiers list is Scott Glenn from Hawaii State Energy Office. Aloha, Chair. Uh, we'll stand on our comments and acknowledge uh, the, what you just said. Great. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, Jay Griffin from the PUC. Yeah, we'll stand on our comments as well, um, acknowledging your intent here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Dean Mishima from DCCA. Aloha, Chair, uh, Vice Chair, members of the committee. We also stand in our written testimony, acknowledging your comments. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dean. Mark Asano from Hawaiian Electric. Hi, good afternoon, Chair. Um, we'll stand on our written testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Matthew Geyer from Faith Action Environmental Justice Task Force. Aloha, Chair. Matt Geyer uh, from the Environmental Justice Task Force. Stand on written testimony and um, just wanted to mention um, I understand you're deferring it, but please make sure any future bills don't jeopardize um, battery storage and electrical storage on the grid, as that is a critical part of going to 100% renewable. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Matthew. Henry Curtis from Life of the Land has uh, submitted testimony and supported this measure. Ted Bowman from Climate Protectors Hawaii who was with us earlier, has submitted testimony and support. Frederick Riddell, Sherry Pollock, Janet Pappas, Axel Beers, and Kaikea Blakemore, all individuals, all in support. Members, any questions of those who are testifying on 111? No? Okay. We're going to move on. Thank you, everyone. We're going to move on to House Bill 561 relating to energy. On our testifiers list, we have uh, Jay Griffin from the PUC. We stand on our written testimony and support and available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Dean Nishina from the DCCA. Aloha, Chair. Uh, similarly, we'll keep it short. Stand on our written testimony in support. Thank you. Uh, available for questions, if any. Thank you, Dean. Uh, Frederick Rydell from Clean Power Alliance has submitted testimony in support. We have Brian Hiani from Hawaiian Electric in support. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Brian Hiani from Hawaiian Electric Companies. We stand on our written testimony in support of this measure, along with the proposed clarifying language for consideration. And I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. 
Yes, thank, thank you, Brian. Uh, Julie Yonker from Hawaii Gas. Sure, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. We stand on our testimony and support with a suggested amendment to add clarity to the bill. Thank you for your opportunity to testify. Great, thank you, Julie. Beppe Shapiro from the League of Women Voters has submitted testimony in opposition. Andrea Quinn has submitted testimony in support. Members, any questions of those who have joined us online? No? I have a quick question. Uh, Julie, since you're already there, um, I'm reading your testimony, which was adding three or, or adding five words. Could you just help me clear, understand, like, how does this help the gas company? Um, sure. So basically, um, it just clarifies um, what we would need to do um, an LCA greenhouse gas for. So I think, for instance, um, obviously the, the the projects that we're doing um, that we are doing the LCA analysis for, but certain projects like you know an IT infrastructure upgrade or something like that, where um, you know that there's minimal or no impact on the greenhouse gases. Um, you know, just to clarify that that um, we wouldn't need to do that. Okay, okay. Thank you, Julie. And a quick question for Brian Hiani from Hawaiian Electric. Yes, sir. Okay, Brian, uh, yours is a short and sweet suggested amendment as well about adding overhauls and, oh, oh, and overhead or underground. Can you help me just understand like why this is important? Um, that was just uh, suggested a language to clarify uh, what constitutes routine uh, system replacements. Um, it's just to provide additional examples of uh, what we consider routine system replacements. Hmm. Okay, seems reasonable. Thank you, Mr. Hiani. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Okay, we're going to move on to our last bill. That is House Bill 1333 HD1 relating to energy. On our testifiers list, we have Scott Glenn from the Energy Office. Aloha, Chair. Uh, we stand on our testimony with comments. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Scott. And members, we have uh, three other individuals, Kai Kea, Blakemore, Andrea Quinn, Janet Pappas, all in support. Any questions for Scott Glenn? OK. Um, thank you. We're going to go into a brief recess before making taking the vote. Well, thank you for your patience, everyone. We are back to our Committee on Energy, Economic Development, and Tourism's 330 agenda. We had three bills on this agenda. The first one was House Bill 111, triple one, uh, relating to renewable energy. This one has a lot of uh, blushes on it, so we don't want to pass ugly bills out of this committee, so we are going to defer on that measure. Uh, any discussion? Anybody really love this bill? Okay, good. So we're going to move on to the next bill, House Bill 561 HD2 relating to energy. Um, going to make a number of amendments to this bill. Um, first, by inserting the recommendations from Hawaii Gas, we heard from them. Inserting the recommendations by HECO, we heard from them. Uh, we're going to change the effective date to upon approval and also uh, add in the amendments recommended by the Hawaii Clean Power Alliance uh, testimony. And I'd like to put in the committee report uh, that the committee finds it's important to reduce the state's reliance on fossil fuels through energy efficiency and increase renewable energy generation. And accordingly, the PUC should focus its analysis on eliminating the use of fossil fuels for electric or gas utility system capital improvements and operations and not uh, just routine system replacement and determine whether it is necessary to conduct analysis for water, wastewater, or telecommunications providers. So what I just mentioned, members, is just purely for the committee report to make it really clear that this bill is about uh, increasing renewable energy uh, generation. So those are the suggested amendments. Any discussion? If not, Senator Nisalusha, I vote yes. For a committee on energy, economic development, and tourism, as regards to House Bill 561 HD2, Chair recommends pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Lee. Aye. 
Senator Riviere, Senator Favellas, excuse. You have four eyes. Your recommendations adopted, Chair. Wait, oh, you're going to put my glasses on now? I have four <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at it. It's funny. Uh, on to the last measure, House Bill 1333, relating to energy. Uh, members, we discussed this. We don't want to have all these rusting dinosaurs, windmills, PV systems out there forever. So I think we see the value in having a study to figure out how we're going to dispose of these uh, items when the day comes when they are to be retired. So the recommendation is to pass this measure as is. Any discussion? If not, Senator Misalucci, I vote yes. For HB 1333, HD 1, Chair recommends pass unamended. Vote, uh, chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye, Senator Lee, aye. Senator Riviere. Aye. And Senator Favela's excuse, you have four eyes. I'm waiting for the joke. And one excuse, and with that, happy Aloha Friday. Yes. Your happy. recommendation is adopted, Chair. Okay, enjoy March Madness and the Weekend Madness. Good